Welcome to the export tutorial. Let's start by recording a MIDI track as an audio file. Right here I have a piano MIDI track which uses an external keyboard to play back and this audio track is used to monitor analog output from the keyboard. Position the cursor in the place where you want to start recording from. Arm the audio track and press record. Okay, let's look at another way to do this. Position your left and right locators. Solo the MIDI and audio track if needed. Then select File, Export, Audio Mix Down. Select the folder file type, either wave or broadcast, channel stereo interleaved. This means the left and right channels will be exported as one stereo file. Resolution, keep this the same as the project resolution as well as the sample rate. Choose output, in my case, the piano MIDI monitor. Activate the real-time export, otherwise the exported file will be empty. Real-time export is required in cases like this and for some VSTIs. So check your VST instrument manual. Check import to pool and audio track. Press save. Click OK. And here we have an audio version of the MIDI track. If the MIDI plays through a VST instrument, channel 1 of the hypersonic in my case, the export process will be slightly different. Select File, Export, Mix Down. We don't need the real time export in this case. And from the Outputs drop-down menu, I'm going to choose Hyper 1. You can virtually export output of all channels besides the input and audition channels. Type your file name and press Save. Press OK. Now you can delete the MIDI track if you don't need it anymore. To export an entire project as a final mix, for example, first set your left and right locators, mute your unwanted channels, turn off clicking. Check all your channels for clipping. Then select File, Export, Audio Mix Down. Choose your directory and file name. The file type depends on what you are exporting for. Wave and Wave 64 are similar. Wave 64 was developed by Sonic Foundry and due to its 64-bit header it's a good file format for longer recordings where the file size is greater than 2 gigabytes. Wave and Wave 64 can be compressed or uncompressed. 
extra options for these files. AIFF and Broadcast Wave can be activated under Preferences, Record, Broadcast Wave. Broadcast Wave. This is our preferred file format. It's the same as a regular wave, but doesn't have the compression options. The extra file descriptions can be exported along with the file, too. AIFF, that's the Macintosh file format. It stands for Audio Interchange File Format. This is widely used. MP3, AUG Vorbis, Real Audio, and Windows Media File Formats use a lossy compression algorithm. This results in a small file size but there is some unrecoverable loss of data. You can choose the level of compression from this drop-down menu here. These file formats are suitable for the internet and for email use. Windows Media Audio Pro File. This is a file format that's just a few years old, not widely used. It supports up to a 96 kHz sample rate and a 24-bit depth. It can also be used as a lossless compression algorithm. Your channels can be mono, stereo split, stereo interleaved, and these two options are for surround sound. Resolution. If you're saving your mix with a lower resolution than the project's resolution, you should apply a dither plugin. That would be to the last slot of your main output bus. Dithering is a process whereby random white noise is added during a process which lowers the resolution. In other words, if you're working in 24-bit resolution on your project, but an audio CD supports only 16-bit resolution, there are two ways to convert high resolutions to lower resolutions, truncating and dithering. Truncating cuts the lower part of the amplitude. It results in an unnatural sound. Dithering, on the other hand, uses a special algorithm. Cubase comes with a dithering plugin from Apogee. This is a great plugin, it does a fine job. Sample rate. CDs use a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. 48 kilohertz is used in many video materials and 96 kilohertz is what you find in audio DVDs. For the internet, you're going to want to use one of these lower options. This will result in a smaller file size. From the Output drop-down menu, choose your main output bus. Click Save. Cubase SX has the option to export a project as an OMF file. OMF stands for Open Media Framework Interchange. This is a platform independent file format. If you work in Cubase only, you don't need to worry about OMF. But if you use Final Cut Pro, for example, OMF will save you some time. And this concludes our export tutorial.